Welcome back, welcome back everyone. Welcome back to a podcast. How's it going? Nah, let's not say that. First note says Bob Marley bad. Watched the Bob Marley movie a few days ago. It was garbage. From the trailer, it felt like the actor would be the problem. Wasn't the case. The actor did a great job. The cast, most of the cast did a really good job. But what the hell? Who wrote this? Might sound almost disgusting, but every time I go to the theater to see a movie, when I leave, I think, you know, why am I struggling to write a script? Why am I banging my head on the wall? Why have I been doing that for years? Why am I trying to make it good? Why am I asking all these questions and hesitating, etc., when people are making garbage all the time? It's There's no script to the Bob Marley. There's a script, but it's... It's just things happen. There's no causality. You don't know why. They just happen. There's no sense. There's no story. <sighs> it's a shame there's this scene where they're making Natural Mystic. And they're trying to find the song. Right? They're making the song. They're trying to figure out how to make this song. And it's a good scene. It's interesting. It's intriguing. It's compelling. You want to keep watching. You want to, you want to understand how are they going to break through. Find the song. It works. We've heard the song before. It's exciting to think about the process of making it. So the process starts. They figure out some things. They try some things. The, the whole way it's presented is quite beautiful. They're riffing. They're improvising. And then the scene just cuts and we never get a conclusion. We never get, you know, the ending of the scene. And that's the whole film. Things, things happen and we don't know why. We don't know why the next scene happens. It's just stupid. I remember before I got into, I got it, the idea into my head that I wanted to make movies. I thought movies seem so complicated. Photos, for example, seemed like the simplest the simplest thing, even though they're not. But the idea of taking a picture, mm, you take a picture. There was the technical aspect of it, which was, you know, intimidating. The equipment, my mother always had a camera to take pictures. She had friends who are professionals. The big equipment, the camera, understanding aperture, etc. Turns out that's simple. Turns out it's the same with films. They are not that complicated. And the films that are made day in, day out that get released, that get the big money, they're all garbage. And the people writing them are clueless and uninspired. So that's what I had to say about Bob Marley. The film is not good. As I mentioned last week, I'm trying to take a note every day. A sentence. Something. I'm put them all together. At the, at the end of the week, I'll try to make a paragraph, which is my notes for the podcast. And then at the end of the month, I have, I have some kind of page, I suppose. And at the end of a year, I'll have 12 pages. It's interesting to think that I could condense every day into a sentence. And then at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, have this whole, well, these pages. My entire experience over a year. It's quite fascinating, actually. That's what this podcast is, I suppose, if I go back and watch it. But since I'm not recording with enough detail. It's not quite there. I know there's a book or a series of books which are essentially diaries of a guy who was writing all of his experiences 24-7 in the, I don't know, maybe the 1800s. And it sounds fascinating and I've heard it is fascinating to get this rich recording of history from one man's perspective the details. I mean, I suppose I could literally talk about how the world is today, how my room is, how the world works today, and in 50 years that would be some kind of document, a fascinating document on how the world works. For example, you know, what, what could become, I don't know, I have a physical phone, 
I suppose in 50 years that might be a thing of the past. Regardless, I went climbing with Alan Monday. It was good. I was tired because I went the day before. And he works out, so he's strong. It was his second session and he was crushing it. And he got to uh, climb with a dyno, which means a climb where you have to jump off the wall every, you know, your whole body off the wall to, to grab another hold, which can be scary. And he was hesitant. He went for it, fell like a sack of potatoes, you know, shoulder and head first. A very uncontrolled fall. Got up, did it, crushed it. And I sensed that at this moment when he fell, it kind of awakened him. He felt more comfortable now with climbing. And he said, you have to learn to fail to learn to succeed. I think that's what he said. Which I have at least one episode titled something like failure leads to success. But I like the way he put it. You have to learn to fail. Which is what we do when we go climbing because you fail so much, you have to learn to fail. You have to get accustomed to failure learn to accept it and, and learn from it. So I thought that was a beautiful and the parallel between failure and success that you have to learn to fail in order to learn to succeed. I was going to go into something I'm going to talk about next week. Yeah, I need to get back on track of the schedule because it, right now I'm recording for the previous week but I already have notes for the next week because we are in the next week. And I want to, I want to link things to this week, but I can't. I've been receiving help. I talked about this before. I've been receiving help from Ty on my script. I don't think I have. A relationship is a complicated thing, and there are so many components and so many aspects. And if you decide to settle in a way, I have settled in the past, in my previous relationship. As crude and ugly as it sounds, I wasn't uh, physically attracted to her. And I thought in my head, you know, don't be so callous, don't be so, what's the word, materialistic or don't put so much emphasis on appearance. It's about the person. And I thought I was being good in that sense and saying, okay, I'm not, she wasn't ugly or anything, but I wasn't attracted physically to her. Which, the fact that she wasn't ugly didn't help. But I wasn't physically attracted to her, but I thought to myself, you know, a relationship is more profound than pure attraction. Which is ridiculous, because attraction is part of it. And I suppose the more you experience relationships, the more you learn that there are a million components to it, to making it work. And Ty, it turns out, decided to help me writing my script and she understood it immediately better than me and she was able to unlock these knots I had these things I didn't know how to what's the word to explain in the script must have been one or two hours where she was just going through the sequences and telling me giving me suggestions and eventually unlocking part of the script which was strange I talked about it with Stefan briefly, and he said, you know, why, why did you think it was strange? And I think I talked about it with someone else who replied, you didn't think she was that smart. And that's not the point. First of all, she was invested in it. That's the first thing. She cared. Once again, we are in a relationship. It's natural to care about you, your, your partner's interests. But she truly cared to the point where she was you know, scratching her head, trying to solve the issues. And then she did. It's not a case of intelligence. It's just that I think she's a lot more creative than she thinks she is because she hasn't really put that to work enough. And so it's like I dropped her in the, in the sandbox and she felt at home immediately and she started sorting everything out, cleaning it. And that, that sounds like a dream relationship to me. The idea of having someone 
where you can have that. There's nothing more important to me right now than this script. As an artist, that's the, the art, that's my project. That's the thing I'm working on for me that I care about. And she, not only did she kind of accept it and give passion, she actually helped me solve it. I mean, it might, might sound stupid, but to me that sounds too good to be true. So I'll make sure to enlist her help more. Maybe she can finish the script for me, who knows. But yeah, I'm talking about this because I really, it never occurred to me. The idea of having a writing, par writing partner in itself never occurred to me. I thought, if it's my idea, I, I'm the one to solve it and I'm the one to work on it. And in asking her questions, I never expected her to get that invested and spend that much time on it. And usually these things, I think that's a kind of a key component to a satisfying ending in a movie or a good plot twist. It's inevitable, yet surprising. I suppose in a way this was inevitable. How? I don't know. But maybe that's, I know that's part of why I was attracted to her in the first place had nothing to do with physical appearance. There was something about her where I could sense that she is extremely creative. So I suppose in that sense it's inevitable. And it's surprising because it never occurred to me to that this would be one of the, the dimensions of our relationship, to talk about a story, creating a story together. And I don't know what else to say, it's just... A beautiful present, an unexpected one. And I'm grateful for it. We're watching Game of Thrones. It's disappointing. We just finished the first four seasons, which are the good ones. And it's disappointing because I've seen it before, because I know that the next four seasons are going to be hell. And because it's not as good as I remembered. In some ways it's better because I understand more how the scenes are structured, how the ep everything is structured. I understand more how it's done. But on the other hand, there are a lot of flaws in it. Which is disappointing. That book over my head somewhere, Blood Meridian. First time I read it, I thought, that's my favorite book of all time. We get to that point where the, I don't remember if they have a name, the Glaston gang, the outlaws, the protagonists, their whole, oh, it's not there anymore, I gave it to my brother. Anyways, their whole, their gang gets destroyed, they get scattered, and there's a moment where I felt something I've never felt reading a book, a transition at that point. And I finished the book and I thought, this was the greatest experience reading a book I've ever had. Then I read it again. It wasn't. It wasn't as good. So I suppose you can never re replicate the first time. But there's also a kind of, I suppose a kind of bias when you're surprised by something. You can over, overrate it. To a degree. So yeah, Game of Thrones, not as good as I remembered. Still pretty good. Still great. Cut my hair. I cut my hair and I thought, I'm going to feel different. I'm going to feel different in the sense that the hair was a, literally a weight and figuratively. Simple things like going to bed with hair everywhere, having to find a way to put it in a bun. It just got in the way all the time. Have to wash it, have to comb it, takes time, energy, blah, blah, blah. It was just a nuisance. Shaved it, and I thought, I should feel better in a way. I should feel like I did this thing, which was the right thing, and now I feel better. But I didn't. And my conclusion is that I just removed things that weren't supposed to be there. Now that the hair is gone, this nuisance, this useless thing, I'm just more myself. I removed things that weren't supposed to be there. Therefore, 
it's like, I suppose, there's this quote about sculpting. You have this uh, slab of marble, this cube of marble. Don't remember who said it, but he's not sculpting into the marble, sculpting into the marble. He's just removing the things that are not supposed to be there to reveal what's underneath. The sculpture is already there. Same principle here. By removing the hair, I didn't do anything special. I just did what I was supposed to do to get more, to get closer to who I am. You know, I don't have the nuisance of the hair anymore, but I don't feel, feel any different. I just feel, I just feel nothing because that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, and I kind of link that to things in general, successes. When I succeed at a climb I was struggling with at the climbing gym. Sometimes I just feel nothing. I feel nothing because I was supposed to succeed. I was doing something wrong and I repeated the mistake multiple times. And then at one point I didn't. I was supposed to get it right and I didn't. But once I did, there was no sense of achievement because it feels like I should always have been able to complete that climb. So I suppose it's given me it's made me think more about things that, that need to be removed to get closer to who I am. So much, you know, dead weight, so many things. This room, there's so many things in this room. I own so many things. Things that I don't need, things that can be removed. So it's just given me these, 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 this, I don't know, just made me think about removing more things to get closer to myself, as you know, weird as that sounds. To streamline, less is more. Oh, that's pretty funny. A note for the previous week, I had a conversation with Patrick, who's one of the keepers of the crux, one of the people I climb with. Really nice guy. We had a conversation on presents. And the point he made was, he doesn't like making a fuss on Christmas, on birthdays, because he believes that often people do that because they feel like that's the moment to give someone you care about a present. And then it makes up for being, for being neglectful the rest of the year. He doesn't like this idea. He feels like you should be able to give presents to someone you care about as often as you feel like it. And, you know, I like the idea. I think he's going to an extreme. You know, on the other side, you can have people who feel like there are special occasions where you go beyond to, to give someone a special present, which doesn't take from the fact that you can give presents at, at other times. But the funny thing is he gave me a present today. It just occurred to me that we talked about this last week and he gave me a present today. He gave me climbing shoes. I climb in the rentals and have done so since I started. It's like my trademark. The shoes are not very good. They make my life difficult. No one else who's been climbing for a while uses rentals. But he bought me the, the exact same pair that they sell or that they rent at the gym. So I have my own pair of Red Chili rental shoes. And I was, I suppose the word is flabbergasted when he gave me the bag with the shoes. Truly confused at the idea of getting a present. I'm not very good at receiving presents. Last year, Ty took me to Winter Wonderland and she had planned the whole thing. Bought tickets for rides, for this, for that. And for a weird reason, Somehow, I couldn't just accept it. I kept paying for things, wanting to buy other rides. I couldn't just say, thank you, let me enjoy the present. I suppose it's called ego. And now, another present, and it's there, and I'm quite confused. But it feels good. I guess I should make it a habit myself to give presents more often, to show appreciation. Oh, 
My keyboard was corrected. I wrote Nix Lutz, a lookup table when you're color grading. It corrected to Nix Nuts. Nick is another guy I climb with. Super strange turn of event. So my brother and I started, well, he started climbing a year before me, but then we started going regularly at the gym at the, the, glim, the, the, the gym nearby, which we love. Talked to a guy called Stefan, a very social creature, especially at the gym. Talks to everyone. Started talking to him. He introduced us to other people. And now we have this kind of tight circle, the eight of us or seven. These guys are all accomplished people. They're older than us. They're at least double our age. Most of us, most of them. They are accomplished. It's a, an expensive gym. And I suspect my brother and I are amongst the, other pe the only people there who spend 50% you know, of the money they have available to go there. And it turns out that Stefan is a writer who's been encouraging me and helping me and who wants to help me in the future with writing and with movies. He has people in the industry. So that's one. Two, Nick is a... He works in the film industry. He's a colorist. He retouches photos for huge brands. He sent me a lot for free and he did a whole session explaining to me and helping me on ways to achieve certain looks I want to achieve. And then we have Patrick, who's in the, the architecture industry. My brother happens to be studying architecture at university. So I suppose that's one way in which my brother and I persisted in doing something that seemed nonsensical. Spending so much money just to go climbing. Everyone I talk to climbing about says, how much does it cost to climb a wall that's ridiculous? We have persisted because we enjoyed it. And met these great people. And you know when, it, when people say everything happens for a reason. It was written. I mean when I tell you that the people we hang out with. Who are a, accomplished you know, adults. In their, in, their, in their given fields. Intelligent people. Who care about their health. About, about pushing their bodies. Are people who work in the fields that my brother and I are, are interested in. That's a weird coincidence. I suppose it's not that weird. It is a little bit weird. So, you know, just another sign that this podcast thing here, I need to find ways to make it more enjoyable for me. But I need to keep going. Somewhere, at some point, it's gonna... Something's gonna happen. Something, anything. Maybe it's already happening. Discipline, discipline, discipline. That's it for the notes. It's bloody difficult to talk about last week when last week was two weeks ago. I'm not too happy about the title, the way I'm making them. I like the... A podcast presents. I think that's perfect. The two fonts work together perfectly. But for the title, not digging it. Not digging it. It would work if it was just a big title. But when it's a longer title and there's the second part that's in s smaller letters, it doesn't work. Talk to my father today. We do video calls weekly. Had been three, three weeks, but he talked to me about, he said he went to my website and saw my posters, which he congratulated me for when I made them three years ago. He's a graphic designer himself. And I suppose I should get back into graphic design. I do believe I'm good at it. He says I'm good at it and he's a professional and he's really good. You know, it's kind of ridiculous. It, my life is truly ridiculous. The thing I spend the most time doing is being a waiter and working at a restaurant. I waste a lot of time on mindless entertainment. Then I spend a lot of time climbing 
and working out, even though it doesn't look like it. You know, another ridiculous thing. And I spend a lot of time writing. I don't do any graphic design, any drawing, any photography. I mentioned this before, but it's crazy how scheduling, turning your life, making yourself into a robot to a degree, how that's the key to balancing all these creative endeavors. The foundation has to be so structured and so rigid. I was watching a video of LeBron James with JJ Reddick on their new podcast when he mentioned you have to sacrifice loved ones for greatness. You know, the sacrifice is so huge. And yet it has to be done if you want. If you want what you want, if I want what I want, big sacrifice is needed. A big sacrifice is needed. Pretty dull episode. Pretty dull. Didn't have much to talk about. I don't know. Life's good. I'm gonna finish that screenplay and that will feel good. Then I'll write another and another and another. Eventually I'll make a movie. Then another and another. Then I'll get back into graphic design. Then I'll make a graphic novel, then one day a novel. I'll be a professional photographer. I'll be able to do handstand push-ups, one-handed pull-ups, muscle-ups, deadlift a lot, bench a lot, squat a lot. I'll be a skilled fighter. I'll join a boxing gym. I'll also learn to kick. I'll learn jiu-jitsu. I'll learn to draw better. I'll learn to speak better. I'll keep my room tidy. What else? I'll start a clothing brand. I'll build schools. I'll invest in other people. I will help millions. I'll stop vaping. I'll start eating healthy consistently. I'll get a good sleep schedule. I'll meditate regularly. I'll learn poetry. I'll learn another language. I'll be able to dunk. I'll be able to do a Nordic curl, 10 Nordic curls. Mm. What else? I'll make a series, then another. Mm. All I can think of right now. All right, thank you. Enjoy the present.